Hello, and welcome to Silencer Storytime with Robert. Today, the hybrid by Silencer Co. Let's go over to our tactical table and take a look at it. So the hybrid is probably one of the silencers we've sold the most of compared to any other model. 300 blackout. Those were supersonic. Uh, this is what it looks like when you get one new in the box. They come in four colors now, but the most common one is gray. This uh, this silencer code gray right here. Um, it's uh, made by Silencer Co., which is, as far as I can tell, is still the largest silencer manufacturer in the industry uh, and has been for several years. There's probably a few others that are starting to catch up to it or get closer to catching up to it, but uh, I believe it's still the biggest uh, company in the industry. Uh, it's been around, they've been around quite a while now. They have a myriad of good products uh, and they, they have a huge brand name and um, have a reputation for good customer service and fixing stuff that uh, a lot of other gun companies would make you pay for to fix. Um, we, we joke that their, their uh, warranty is they'll fix stupid mistakes once. So, um, and the hybrid is actually designed in, in, in one sense to be able to be very easy to repair and we'll talk about that. So what it's made of, the, sound, the SoundScro hybrid is got a titanium tube and it's got uh, an all stainless steel baffle stack. So on our cutaway over here, you may want to get a little closer. This is actually, we've got a cutaway uh, of, of four different Silencer Co. silencers. This one is uh, the Omega, but the hybrid is very similar. So you see it's got a titanium tube that's pretty thin. And then it's got a bunch of stainless steel uh, uh, cone baffle stacked inside. The hybrid on the inside looks pretty much the same as this, except it's got a much bigger blast chamber. My understanding is the baffles are about the same uh, number and the same length, but the the hybrid's got a bigger blast chamber that enables it to take up to 338 Lapua Magnum and some of the bigger pressure calibers than the Omega. The other thing that's different is that the Omega has uh, stainless steel baffles and the first baffle is Stellite, where the hybrid is stainless steel the whole way through. The other thing is that the hybrid is not 30 cal, it's 46 caliber. The reason they said, uh, most people think, call, say it's a 45 caliber, and it's not, it's a 46 caliber. The reason it's a 46 caliber as opposed to a 45 caliber is if it was 45, you could shoot 45 ACP, which is probably how the biggest uh, caliber that most people are shooting through it, but you can also shoot it on 458 SOCOM. So if you want to have a uh, super quiet pig gun that you can shoot 600 grain subsonics out of, you can get a hybrid and put it on there. A lot of people who have the hybrid will buy it for 308 and 5.56 and 9mm pistol or something. And uh, it, it happens all the time. They'll be they'll come in and they'll say, like they're picking up their hybrid and they'll say, man, I've been looking at a 458 SOCOM. Uh, what kind of silencer will work for that? And we'll say, well, the one you bought already works on it. Uh, that happens pretty regular. So uh, the extremes of calibers you can put in this are, like we said, 458 SOCOM on the diameter size. Anything smaller than a, equal to or smaller than a 46 caliber in diameter, or the pressures of a 338 Lapua Magnum. So if it has, if it's a bullet that's a smaller diameter uh, than a 46 caliber and less pressure than a 338 Lapua Magnum, it will work in this. Which, realistically, to me, that's like every center fire caliber that's not 50 BMG. Uh, and I'm sure there's some outliers there, but the, the, the bulk of the most popular ones, 308, 6 7 millimeter, 556, 300 blackout, 9 mil, 45 ACP, 10 millimeter, 40 cal, 357 sig, I mean, it'll pretty much shoot all the center fire stuff. Uh, one thing it doesn't do well that a lot of people ask us about, uh, it, it's not a 22 silencer. So you can shoot 22 through it and it will make it quiet, but the hybrid is not a cleanable silencer. Um, it doesn't come apart where you can get into each real baffle and clean it. So we tell people it's not a 22 silencer. Uh, silencer Co. It's not, well, this is not what it says in the manual, but in my opinion, if you were to shoot a little bit of 22 through it every now and then, a few rounds here in the, their squirrel hunting, it, you wouldn't notice a difference. But you don't want to go and shoot, um, you know, like a thousand rounds every weekend, a 22, and then put it back on a 5.56 or a 308 and uh, hammer it. Because the main reason is that 
your 22 long rifle has not got enough heat or pressure to self-clean, and so you get sort of lead and carbon buildup in there. Then you go back and put it on your bigger rifles, something like a 5.56 or a 308. This thing is really fun to shoot with this can on it. <laughs> it's like, you just hear the cycle if you have an earplug in. And that will clean it out quickly, but it'll clean it by breaking all those like sort of lead ingots, crystals, lead and carbon crystals out of there. And they'll clean it out of the silencer, but it kind of, all the stuff will fly around in there and you'll get sandblasting effect. Some of the bits may come back in your barrel and, and be bad for your gun. So uh, a little 22 is probably okay, although I'll go ahead and tell you, Silencer Co. tells you not to. Um, it's definitely not a dedicated 22 silencer. Um, so one thing that's cool about this is the, uh, the way it attaches. So the way it comes in the box, uh, it's got the 46 caliber end cap. You can buy other end caps for it. Uh, in fact, it takes all the same end caps that the Omega series does. They have 9 millimeter, 5.56, and 30 caliber end caps at the moment. So this is the tool that comes with it. This is the same tool that comes with the Silencer Co. Omega. You put it in the front. Yep. So we took that one off. And then here, this is an Omega we've got with a 30 caliber end cap. And you'll notice that this goes right on here. And just, and the point of this is to make it a little quieter. Obviously you don't want to accidentally leave these things on and shoot a 40, uh, 45 through it with a 30 cal end cap on it because it'll damage your end cap. Um, people ask all the time, well, if I, if I accidentally put the wrong caliber through it, will it, you know, just tear the silencer up? It's probably not good for it, uh, but we've seen that happen a, a couple times with customers who've come in for new end caps, and none of the times that they've come in, it's, it's not damaged the actual threads in the silencer. Uh, these mounts are pretty well designed to uh, shred the end cap and not damage the silencer, as far as I can tell. I haven't had any end cap strikes that caused permanent damage to the silencer. Uh, and uh, you can get, like I said, 5.56 five, and 30 cal end caps. The other question we get a lot is, well, if I, if I pay a bunch of money for another end cap, am I actually going to notice any difference? And what I usually tell customers is um, there is a difference, but it's not a tremendous difference. Um, if I had to quantify it, I'd say it's like probably two to three decibels. What I usually recommend is, since we have a shooting range outside, take your silencer outside, shoot a couple rounds through it, and then... Um, We'll, we'll get one of our end caps and stick it on there. You try a couple rounds through that and see if you like it before you buy it. A lot of people are just happy with the 46 cal and they don't, they don't feel like they need to extra, spend the extra money. Um, I'm a nerd and if it were me, I would want the smaller end cap. But uh, a lot of people are fine with just the 46 cal end cap. Because um, it's already pretty quiet. Now how does the hybrid, uh, it's a jack of all trades. and So some people would say the hybrid is a jack of all trades and a master of none. So how does it compare to like a dedicated 30 cal? Well, or a 5.56? I'll compare it to the Omega first off because it's like the most apples to apples comparison. They're basically the same silencer with different bores. The, the Omega uh, is a 30 cal made by the same company, same number of apples, etc. The biggest difference is it's gonna be a little lighter and a little shorter. You'll get just a little bit better suppression out of this because of the bore diameter, but the bore diameter is not everything. The hybrid still sounds really good on a lot of stuff because it's got so much more volume. Um, what I generally find with customers is that if I shoot, if I shoot this and this next to each other, and a period of a time has elapsed that's like more than a minute or two, they don't notice the difference. They sound the same. If you shoot them right after each other, like 10, 15 seconds, then they'll say that the Omega is quieter. And the main difference that they hear is uh, there seems to be a little bit of like a directional noise. If you're behind the gun shooting, if you're, if you're shooting the gun or if you're shooting behind somebody shooting it like in the woods, they'll sound the same. But it, at our range, we have uh, about 200 yards and there's a big, there's like a 400 foot tall mountain uh, behind it and we don't have any trees or anything in the way. And so what I find is that they sound the same initially, 
but you'll get like a, a super like a directional noise that comes out of the front of the silencer that will go out bounce off that mountain and then we'll get like a delayed sound that, that echoes off the mountain so in front of the silencer there's a good bit of more noise that comes out of the hybrid than the 30 cal but to the shooter's perspective i don't think there's very much difference um so let's go and talk about some of the different mounts um there are a ton of different mounts for this thing which some people see as a negative because it's like they've got to own them all right and then i see as a positive because you can you can buy one silencer and if your if your shooting habits change or you buy a different gun uh in the time you're waiting on it two three years from now you may use be using this on a gun you had no intention of using you didn't even hadn't even been designed at yet at the time you bought the silencer so if you look at the back here when it comes to the box it's got uh, a piston assembly it comes with a piston assembly and a 30 cal mount this is the 30 cal mount direct thread mount uh, it does not have a piston in it you have to buy the piston separately and I think oh, dropped on the floor here's another one uh, some people are upset about that but the reason they do that is because there's like what there's five main piston thread pitches and there's there's like four extra ones that are less standard and they don't know what you're going to use this thing for so so this for example this is a 45 piston uh, you'll note this one's yellow I actually used a rugged brand piston that's another point these uh, hybrids will use anything that's sort of octane series so uh, sometimes you can get away with using a rugged or a griffin um, thread pitch uh, sorry not thread pitch you can get use a rugged or a griffin um, piston size uh, and silencer co pistons will also work inside of dead air products but the dead air uh, ghost pistons with the big teeth will not fit in these although just about everything but the teeth seems to be the same so i've got this on a 1911 right now and a lot of people ask well what the heck does a piston do when you have a, a 1911 or a browning action pistol the first step in uh in in the after you fire is the gun will unlock the back of the barrel drops down the front of the barrel uh goes up and uh, that's a way to keep the handgun weight down and, and still manage a recoil. When you add all this weight to the front of the handgun, you lose, uh, it turns the gun into a single shot because it doesn't have enough oomph to raise the barrel of the pistol anymore. So when you're shooting, there's pressure in here. It pushes the piston out like that. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. And it kicks, it basically kicks the gun open where, whereas it, it fights it being a single shot. So you use the different pistons to mount them on different calibers. If I wanted to put it on a uh, 9mm SIG, for example, you just grab your 9mm piston, unscrew that, put the other one in. Uh, one complaint that people have with the hybrid, if you like shooting, if you like seeing all, every bit of your handgun sights over top of the hybrid, like on this standard 1911, it's got this is a Kimber Custom 2 target that's got uh, some taller ish sights than like a government 1911 sights. If I shoot both eyes open, I can see the target. But if I close an eye and all you have is the sights, you're going to have to kind of imagine, uh, you're going to have to see through the silencer a little bit. It looks like it's got about an eighth of an inch of silencer that goes above the sights. So you can fix that by. Uh, getting some taller sights if it really bothers you um, but i find when i make them shoot a couple rounds they can usually hit the target just fine um, especially if they're used to shooting both eyes open um, when people ask me what the silencer the the hybrid is what i generally tell them is to me it's a rifle silencer that you can also use as a handgun um, there are other silencers like the griffin optimus that are multi-caliber or the Liberty Mystic X or the Cosmic um, that also can do a, a bunch of different uh, calibers like this. They're, they're multi-caliber silencers. Um, and I, those other three, I generally uh, explain that they're, I see those as, as a pistol silencer that can also be used as a rifle silencer. They're smaller in diameter, um, like the Liberty Mystics and Cosmics are pretty light and uh, they're lighter and longer 
Uh, so they generally work pretty well on um, on pistols. Well, they're, I guess I should say they're lighter in the pistol format. So the heaviest the heaviest setup for this silencer is uh, is in the piston assembly. The piston assembly with the piston in it's pretty hef pretty hefty. Uh, this whole thing. I get the tools out. Put it on there too tight. So these are your tools for taking the piston assembly out. Uh, if it's in there light enough, you can do it with one. If it's in there too tight, you can put the other one on there and squeeze it. I'm always a little bit afraid to use my fingers. If it's on there really tight, what I'll do is I'll, I'll get it set up and I'll lay it on the floor like this because I'm afraid of chopping my fingers. And I'll just like hit it, hammer it with my hands or with a, uh, a shoe. These tools work really well, but uh, you should, you know, you can't take a hammer to them or put them in a vise. They are sheet metal. You can bend them. I've bent several. Um, but you know, if you're if you're just doing it hand tight, they work great. One thing I tell customers when they pick up these silencers uh, is that uh, when these are new, these either the direct thread mounts, so this is 30 cal direct thread. When you put this direct thread mount or this in and they're brand new, you got to keep in mind that they will, uh, they, they, they can wiggle, the, the mount to the silencer part can wiggle loose a little bit when they're brand new. Uh, I'd say give it 200 rounds. If you're shooting a little bit, uh, your first day you own it, you should check it every now and then to make sure it's tight. Shoot a few rounds, let it cool, check to see if it's tight. Shoot a few rounds, let it cool, check to see if it's tight. After about 200 rounds, if it gets... Uh, carboned up in there, I don't find that they have trouble sticking together anymore. In fact, let me show you another one. So people wonder like, well, if it's got two different parts, should I worry about it wiggling loose? When it's new, yes. So this is my hybrid. I have, I've got, I'm, I just filed a form for, we've had, this one is uh, uh, number 1698. I got this one in the very first batch that Silencer Co. shipped, I think in 2016, late 2015, something like that. Um, and this has been our demo hybrid here at the store for several years. Uh, as you can see, it's kind of ugly looking compared to a new one. And the reason is, is uh, I'd say, how many rounds do you think this thing has through it? Tens of thousands. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if it's multiple thousands. tens of thousands, but definitely thousands. Um, Color this, is, this is about the 30th price tag I've put on it. Uh, we keep putting price tags on it and then burning them off of it. Um, one thing that we have used this one for extensively is uh, uh, we have put it on our saw. So I've got an ASR mount on our saw that's rock set in place. And then I have the uh, female ASR mount on the hybrid. And so I can screw this on this barrel. This is kind of our whipping boy barrel that sees most of the abusive shooting. Uh, and the hybrid uh, paint job burned off of that when we did a 200 round straight dump, or a customer did, um, out of this thing. And um, I've repainted it once before, and we did it again later, and so now I've just decided to roll with it and keep it rainbowy. Um, the reason we use the hybrid on the saw is, uh, the biggest reason is, because it's got such a big blast chamber and a big bore, it's one of the lowest back pressure silencers in the store. And that's not something that's advertised for, at least I haven't found much advertising about it. But just from shooting a bunch of stuff, I find that if you have a gun that's very low, very back pressure sensitive, um, like a saw, it's got a huge gas port in here and a huge piston, and you put just about anything on it and it goes from dot, 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 to dot, 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 you know, it'll speed up tremendously. If we put the hybrid on there, it doesn't change the rate of fire very much, so. Uh, it's very low back pressure, and I think it's the lowest back pressure silencer we, we sell in the store. So uh, I shoot it mostly because it doesn't, the gun doesn't eat ammo as quickly, and slow rate of fire, at least in my opinion, is funner to shoot. These things are also sound amazing on 9mm carbines. So to demo that, this is one of Dandy's hybrids. Or Dandy's hybrid, I don't know if he has more than one. 
<laughs> Only one. Only one. <laughs> uh, the cool thing about so this has got the piston assembly in it still, like we were showing you earlier. What I'm doing now, he has a looks like a 45 piston in there. I'm gonna leave the piston assembly in there, but I'm gonna take the piston, the spring, and the end cap out. And now I'm gonna put a three lug mount. They have two different three lugs. The, the long size and the short size. The short size, I thought I had one right here, maybe I don't. There's a short one. The short size is like a flush mount. So it goes in here like that. So it's flush. Um, the three lugs that fit in these are, uh, there's some across brand, what's the word? There's some just like on the uh, direct thread mounts, there's some cross brand compatibility between uh, like the rugged obsidian mounts will work in this, the Griffin Optimus mounts will work in, in these as well and vice versa. Uh, who else am I forgetting? Anyway. That one's 45. Oh yeah, and so you can also, Soundsco also sell some 45 three lugs that you can put in here. Um, as an example, if you're wondering how the three lug works, this is our store MP5, and I've got an old Soundsco Octane 45K on there. And to run on the three lug, you just mount it like that. If you wanted the silencer to be shorter and flush, you would use the, the flush mount, and then you'd get the silencer back another inch and a half. Um, this is a bigger than 9mm silencer bore, but this is one of the quietest uh, 9mm carbine silencers in the store. I don't know if it's the quietest, but it's it's got to be in the top four or five. And even though it's not a 9mm dedicated silencer, it sounds great on 9mm because it's got so much volume. The volume overcomes the, the bigger bore size. So some other cool things about the hybrid worth knowing. So let's say you've got a ton of dead air stuff. You've got a Sandman S and a Sandman L, and you are heavily invested in dead air mounts, or you just like the way the dead air mounts work more. You can get the dead air chemo mount, and uh, it's you unscrew your your dead air your silencer co uh, direct thread or whatever you've got in the back of the silencer, and you put this in there. You unscrew it. We and screw this guy in there. It uses the same little wrench tool attachments. Uh, for tightening it in. I'll show you how this works. We have a dead air mount on their M16 because right now we're running the Sandman S on this machine gun rental. Slide this on here. There we go. And it's on there. Uh, one thing that the hybrid gets used for in this configuration, I would say the most is for AKs. The hybrid, because it has such a big bore and very low back pressure, is a is a pretty decent AK silencer. Uh, and uh, dead air, as far as, as far as I remember, Silencer Code does not have a 14 by one ASR mount, um, which is their flash hider slash muzzle brake mount. Dead air does, and if you get the chemo mount and put it in here, you can have a pretty good dedicated AK silencer. That way, if you get barrel whip or if your AK doesn't have the, the, the most concentric uh, uh, thread job on the front, which a lot of them don't, um, it doesn't matter if it's perfectly straight because this has got so much uh, wiggle room. Danny, was we were actually trying this out yesterday on, a, uh, on an AK in 5.45 and uh, it sounded really quiet. Just the, the volume uh, makes up for it. So, we got to wrap this up sometime. So, in conclusion, uh, if you want to get a silencer that will work on uh, tons of different stuff and uh, will be a pretty good silencer for guns that you haven't even bought yet and haven't even thought about buying yet, the hybrid is a pretty good choice. Um, whether it's choice for you, I don't know. You can come on in, talk to us about it, and uh, we can demo it out. You can put some more rounds through my heavily whipped uh, hybrid here. Uh, one thing that some people might want to know, what does a 10,000 round full auto hybrid silencer look like on the inside? I don't think we can get lighting, but uh, certainly try. Uh, I'll just describe it to you. 
all the baffles look fine. The very except for the very first baffles got uh, because it's a three prong. It's got uh, three little eaten out corners in it. Uh, it's just started to damage the first baffle a little bit. Um, you know, if it gets really really bad, we'll send it back to Silencer Co. and have them record it for us. But I would expect this to handle several 10,000 more rounds before it got bad enough to really need to send back. Sounds just like it did when it was new. Um, if you have any questions, you can always call us at the store, Tennessee Silencer, TennesseeSilencer.com, and hope to see you for another Silencer story time. Thank you.